In our Earth Matters series, we're zeroing in on President Trump's claims just made moments ago on what he calls his environmental leadership, touting his administration for improving the quality of air and water in the U.S. That would be despite pulling out the pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement and rolling back power plant regulations and weakening fuel standards in the U.S. auto industry. Let's bring in CNN's Daniel Dale to fact check the president. Of course, uh, Bill Weir, CNN's climate correspondent. Daniel, uh, first to you, uh, I want to, you to listen to the sound and tell me what you think of it. Remember, management. It's called forest management. So it's a very important term. When I went to California, they sort of scoffed at me for the first two weeks and maybe three weeks and not so much four weeks. And <laughs> after about five weeks, they said, you know, he's right. He's right. So what's he talking about? So he's talking about the time when he was claiming that climate change was not the driver of California's wildfires. Rather, it was forest management. It was that they were not doing a good enough job raking leaves, uh, cleaning up the floor of the forest. And that was the big issue. And so this claim he made today is revisionist history. California was not scoffing at the idea that forest management was part of the problem. Pretty much everyone agrees that it is. But they were also saying that climate change is also a significant part of the problem. They were saying that the two fires that were happening when Trump was making this claim, the Camp and Woolsey fires, did not even start in forests. Uh, they were also pointing out that the federal government, not California, manages more than half of California's forests. So they were rejecting the blame he was placing on them. So this, this kind of, uh, this story that he's telling today, they laughed at me at first and then they said I was right, is, is not what happened, Jake. <laughs> Interesting. Bill, the president uh, used to say, wrongly, that the U.S. had the cleanest air and water in the world. He's now changed his language on that in recent weeks. Yeah, maybe the facts caught up with them, uh, Jake. They have sort of modified that claim. The numbers we can put up here is show that we don't uh, uh, come anywhere close to the top of the world when it comes to these things. T tenth in air quality, uh, water sanitation, 29th drinking water. He was careful to say, unlike uh, Vice President Pence, who tried to, I guess, claim to you that all water was clean, number one there. Uh, but, you know, lost in all of this is he's, he's touting the claims that are only made possible by Richard Nixon and every president since, the Clean Water and Air Acts, the EPA, that really did a great job of, of making the air in Los Angeles not, uh, you know, tasteable anymore. You can now see the mountains or, you know, the Cuyahoga River isn't on fire anymore. But saying that we're now going to gut that entire agency is like saying there's been a 74 percent reduction in house fires over the last, uh, you know, generation. But we're going to fire the firemen and, uh, and put taxes on hoses and take away regulations on smoke alarms. And we think it's somehow going to get better. Daniel, the, the president also put a price tag on the Green New Deal that's been popular among many progressives. Take a listen. Their plan is estimated to cost our economy nearly $100 trillion, a number unthinkable, a number not affordable even in the best of times. If you go 150 years from now and we've had great success, that's not a number that's even uh, thought to be affordable. $100, tr $100 trillion, Daniel? So, Jake, we know that the president makes up a lot of numbers. This is not a number he made up out of thin air. This is a number that comes from a conservative group, the American Action Forum, which put a price tag on the Green New Deal of $93 trillion. I think it's important to note the source of the figure, and it's also important to note how they got it. What they did was make a number of assumptions and estimates that we have no idea will come true. For example, they assumed that there would be a $36 trillion cost from the U.S. implementing a single-payer health care plan like Bernie Sanders wants as part of the Green New Deal. We have no idea if Bernie Sanders will be president. We have no idea if this is how Green New Deal proponents will try to achieve the goal of universal health care. So there are a lot of assumptions here. Or at least it's based on a number There's that something. exists somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Baby steps. Bill, you're out there talking every day to people uh, about climate change, the effects of it. Do, do Americans have confidence in how President Trump is handling environmental issues and climate change? Not really. I mean, that's that that topic. He gets his highest disapproval numbers. It's two to one uh, disapprove to approve on that. But it's really like politics. Uh, climate change is local. And as you go on a road trip across America, it's like a road trip through the five stages of grief. There's a lot of denial spots. You get to places like Miami where there's bargaining. But what struck me today is he brought up a, an owner of a bait shop in Florida uh, who saw firsthand the devastation of red tide, which is caused by pollutants flowing down Lake Okeechobee and into the Gulf there, and it's charged, supercharged uh, this bacteria, and it's caused, you know, exacerbated by climate change, which makes me think he's got Republicans at Mar-a-Lago, or they're seeing internal numbers, polling numbers, that Republicans in Florida really care 
about the climate because it is nonpartisan there. And the same in Alaska, where it was hotter in Anchorage than Key West on the July 4th of July. At some point, you can no longer deny it, despite your party loyalty. All right, Bill Weir and Daniel Dale, thank you so much for the fact checking.